Hello, and welcome back to Quiet RC. I'm Rob. Today we're doing something completely different. We're doing a drag race, and not just between two cars, 11 cars that I have. Oh, and this is one of the most technically complicated videos I've ever put together, so just for that reason alone, can you just give it a like? Thanks. Okay, welcome to uh, Quiet RC HQ here. The thing we're gonna do today is a little bit different. Uh, as I mentioned in my intro, we're gonna do a drag race, but I have 11 different vehicles that I'm gonna do. And specifically what I'm talking about is back in January, a Reddit user by the name of Chinus Wiz suggested that we all take our cars out and we do basically just a 100 foot drag race really simple and uh, they called it the gentleman's drag race so that's what we're going to do here today so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over some of the footage of the drag races and just give a little commentary on each of the cars and i'll splice that in here so without further ado let's go ahead and check out these gentlemen's drag races all right the first one we're starting out with here is the team associated rc10 b6.4 two-wheel drive buggy from Team Associated. Basically just built as a kit. This one pretty much hooked up right away. This one was relatively simple to actually get to do the run successfully. As you can see, posted a quick time of 2.20. Next up here is the Tamiya Blockhead Motors Wild One. A couple different upgrades. The biggest thing that's going to make a difference is that I was using a 19 turn brushed motor from Holmes Hobby. Overall, this one wasn't that difficult to get to hook up on the pavement. I did have a little bit of trouble with it getting to accelerate uh, in a straight line, so I had to feather the throttle a little bit. After uh, that, this parking lot was about half finished, half kind of left rocky, and so I did blast it around there a little bit. The Tamiya Super Cloudbuster, this is pretty much just box stock. I've done some ball bearings, the usual thing that you have to do with every Tamiya kit, and then just the paint job that I've done on here is kind of non-box art, so I guess that's technically not stock. The first couple times I tried to do this, I was really shocked at how unstable it was on just flat pavement. You'll kind of see some of the rocking happening here. It's pretty crazy how unstable these stock shocks are. As I mentioned in an earlier Cloudbuster video, uh, the build video that I did, I do have a full carbon race chassis set that is a future project that i have and i will be having a video on that look forward to that and then i'm definitely going to take this cloudbuster and redo some of the tests that i've done with that chassis and compare uh, i'm sure there's gonna be a huge difference okay next up actually is this crc ck25 or carpet knife this is one that i race every couple weeks and when I say race, I'm really just kind of taking it to the track and practicing with it for you know a few hours. I rarely get to stay and race just due to life happening. Now, this one was particularly hard to get to hook up. It has foam tires, which are obviously meant for carpet. I didn't do really any prep with any of these cars. So you might see in the video just a tiny bit of roll in to that, to that start line. This is kind of what I had to do. I think if it was given proper tires, I do have rubber tires for it that might have hooked up better, but just didn't do any prep with this stuff. The Dynahead here, this actually has a few upgrades. Uh, however, it does just have the stock motor that came with the kit, but it has ball bearings. It has a little bit different front end, but nothing that's going to affect the straight line drag race performance of this. Maybe the shocks would, but that's about it. What this actually has is this actually has gear reduction in the hub. So it has these portal axles, and within that, uh, it even reduces the speed down further. So I believe this is the slowest vehicle that I have, but it's more kind of by design than just it being a bad vehicle. Really fun to take this thing off roading. Next here we have the Kyosho Phantom. Uh, this is the second version that they did. I do have a build video for this coming up. In the video, I've already actually switched out the ESC for a different 
speed control. Given how much trouble I actually had getting that uh, other 12 scale uh, CK25 to actually hook up, I was kind of expecting a similar experience with the Phantom uh, because it's 12 scale, it has foam tires. Um, now the foam tires are a little bit different, a little thicker. Uh, maybe they were kind of hooking up a little bit better on the asphalt, but really the biggest difference was the four wheel drive. Four wheel drive really kind of helped to keep it in a straight line, uh, much easier to just kind of mash the throttle and get it to go in a straight line. The Team Losi Mini JRX2, uh, you'll see here on the screen that one of the upgrades that I have is a brushless motor. It's a lot of power and I have to put, I had to put a lot of weight in the front of this vehicle to get it to stay down. After my experience with the Team Associated, I was kind of expecting this one to hook up as well. However, the tires that are that come with it in the kit are pretty, pretty stiff, and it had a lot of trouble getting it to actually hook up and you know stay in a straight line. So this one took a lot of attempts to get it to actually just go in a straight line once or twice. This is the Tamiya Mini. Uh, this is their newest one, the M08R. A uh, little interesting fact that some of you may or may not know, but with the Tamiya Minis, currently, I believe this is true throughout all uh, eight series that they've done. If it's a even number, so the M01, M03, M05, M07 are all front wheel drive, even numbered one, two, four, six, M08 are all rear wheel drive. Now, I know for sure they did a M05 four wheel drive version, but seems to be very rare. I can't find them anywhere. This one is another one that probably would have been a lot faster if I had been able to get it to hook up a little bit better. Specifically, this has way too much motor in it. It has a 17 and a half turn brushless. It's way too much speed for this particular vehicle. It should have maybe like a 25.5, especially to do this. Maybe I could get away with a 21.5. Um, but again, I didn't mess around with the tires or any of the setup or anything like that. Um, but I did have a hard time getting this one to stay in a straight line as well. The Ford Escort MK2 Rally. This is the MF01X chassis. Uh, they're actually coming out with a new body kit for this, a new kit and a new body that is a Golf, I believe. Right now, the only bodies that they kind of sell with the MF01X are all for their longer or 239 millimeter wheelbase. I'm currently in the middle of taking this and the M08R and converting them into shorter chassis, the 225 millimeter, just for fun, uh, new bodies, uh, had to buy a new shaft. But this is shaft driven four wheel drive. It's really similar in kind of layout and chassis construction to the old TL01 I had years ago. The Tamiya Torque Tune motor comes with this kit and it actually gives you great pop off the line, but you can see it kind of maxes out here and really doesn't go that fast. However, after I did these parking lot runs, I took this to a local state park and just started taking the MF01X around the trails and had a great time with it. This is my Schumacher MI8. This is another vehicle that I run uh, at a track uh, almost every other week. This is the one you've seen pop up a few times, and uh, even on like the bench episodes. It, it really just has suspension made of glass. Uh, every time I run it, I seem to break it. Um, you'll see later on in a clip here, I did manage to break one of the upper mounts for the rear link. Being that this is also four wheel drive, I had some extra tires that I don't use on carpet. So this one, actually, you can see I got it to hook up pretty well and quickly with a time of 2.07. HPI Micro RS4, just did a video on building this. A lot of fun to kind of rebuild this one. This is another one that I had a lot of trouble getting it to hook up. I had briefly considered maybe throwing a brushless in here, but given just how much difficulty I've had hooking it up just in controlled environments, and then in this, uh, I probably would never do that. It just seems like it'd be a little more fun to kind of have it be manageable. All right, and here are your results. Fastest one was, in fact, the MI8, which was kind of no surprise, honestly, going out here. And as I said earlier, the Dynahead was the slowest one, but it's not its fault. It's supposed to be slow. A lot of fun out in the dirt and uh, kind of the mounds of, of dirt that we have out in the backyard. All right, well, those were the drag races, the 11 vehicles that I decided to take out for this particular run. I hope you enjoyed it. 
if there's any other questions you have about some of the setups or if you think there are things that I could have done better to get some better speeds out of these, let me know in the comments below. Other than that, please remember to like and comment anything you want. And of course, more than anything, subscribe because I am going to be putting out new videos, new content. Thanks very much. Have a great one.